over a year away from the first scheduled in-car test and back where they started without an engine. Got less on the shaft rotating with you. Piston ring seals, we are on piston rings. We talked to Dodges, yeah. they haven't got anything. They haven't, that seal doesn't work. 400 PSI, forget it, 15 is max. Towards the end of 1984, the atmosphere of gloom over the failure of the four-cylinder engine is replaced by optimism. Funding for the design of a completely new engine has been agreed. It will be a Ferrari-like V6. Keith Duckworth. The choice of a, one, a V6 is on the basis that most people are using V6s who are successful and that therefore Whichever way the rules go, we feel that they will be to suit V6s. The 120 degree V6 does allow you to fit two standard turbochargers in the conventional position, one on each side of the engine, and therefore you can in fact join the rest of them in the now established situation. Chicago-based Beatrice is a huge American trading company. In February 1985, at the highest level, Ford and Beatrice do a deal. The result is an aerospace quality engineering company on a windy industrial estate near Heathrow. Have you engines to tie up with that very nicely? Yes, the electronics will be the last sort of thing in the file. Yeah. When will we get an actual run? engine? as a lump of we, the metal part. It will build a racing car exclusively for the new engine. But as the diminutive V6 prototype was wheeled from assembly to the dynamometer, it was revealed that all was not well between the team and its huge American sponsor, Beatrice. By now, Ford were deeply committed to the engine and a sophisticated electronic development program. As it turned out, it was the decision to design their own electronic engine management computer that was to prove to be one of the most... American Frank Rayo from Motorola and British electronics engineer Steve Taylor are still hunting the bugs from the prototype engine management computer. This is called eliminate all the noise you possibly can so the engine runs. <laughs> engine runs, sort of stuff. And when it gets back... It's Hang on, Frank, you've got a short back. See it shorts out, huh? Yep. That's the one. It's on Someone one of that line here. there. One of those is not the right one. Gone, right. Yeah, we've done so much to the, uh, the circuitry and software. Yeah, but I just want to prove it, all right? I want to put it back to its original mounts. OK, check the grounds now. It's four in the morning. They've been working for 18 hours, only to discover what many other Formula One engineers already know, that electromagnetic pulses from the engine play havoc with the delicate memory circuits in the microprocessor. These are all tied to ground now. Got a five. 728. You've done 27. 25. Yeah, well, 27 here should be VSS minus. 27, 28. You've done that. Okay. How about this one? Yeah, well, that's the one you said. You're shorting out of. There it is, right there. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Oh, 30 is a ground. Oh, well, why is it pulling supply down? Uh, it was open. You tied a B-band to it no. on a one case. Good. Okay, so that's all set. We have a big ground path. All those pens are just set of a ground, right? Yes. No, no, it's ignition diagnostics. IDM. We're not yeah. using that. Right. Okay, so uh, when you're the engine purr, we appreciate all these kludges. Anything on the way. We're looking good, Frank. Good. 
final test is running this piece of wire to case ground. Is that the last one? Yeah. Fantastic. Looks like you're buying the beers tonight, then. Yeah, that's fine. Good. It's a very good, yeah. Looks, you can feel it. At last, brain and brawn were mated, running together on the dynamometer under the vigilant eye of specialist engineers from Ford. The computer is still picking up rogue signals triggering the fuel injector at the wrong moment. Taylor searches in vain for the rogue signal. The engine is shut down. It would pick off a high spot on the way. An hour later, the reason for the erratic fuel injector pulse is still a mystery. Another totally different pulse and continue to iterate that way. It can do that. Run past those layers. Watch us run the outside here. We saw how, like a patient undergoing intensive care, this engine drifted into life after delicate and painstaking adjustment. After two hours of rewiring, the V6, triggered by its computer, sounds like a racer for the first time. The fuel pulse is steady at last. and crawling insects bug you, kill them dead with raid. When it says raid, it kills bugs. Dead. For years, the Danes have prided themselves on their beautiful royal Copenhagen porcelain, their striking antique pewter, their artistic George Jensen silver, even the odd Viking idea in horn. But most agree their finest idea is probably in glass. could look something like this. A hard, ugly wall called tartar is building up around your teeth. And only your dentist can pull it down. But this wall is persistent. It won't stay down for very long, which is why Colgate developed a special toothpaste for adults, Colgate Tartar Control. This fluoride toothpaste not only tastes good, but will reduce tartar buildup on adult teeth so they feel smoother and look cleaner. Colgate Tartar Control fights the buildup of tartar. We asked people to test new Tyne brand frozen main meals for one. I was pleasantly surprised at the amount actually in the, um, the meal itself, and so were the family. Um, spaghetti bolognese was there's only spaghetti, and spaghetti I've had, I think, anywhere, really. I have to agree with him. It really was excellent. They all look good on the plate. Good balance of both meat and vegetables, herbs and spices. The quantity and the quality of it for 99 pence is very good value. New Tyne brand, main meals for one. They're a meal, not a mouthful. Call this a service. Ah. Traditional ways of depositing and withdrawing money can prove Nearly there. inconvenient. I don't believe it. The Abilink Red Diamond, however, allows you to make deposits or withdrawals on up to three different types of account with a single card. 
Abbey Link, a member of Link, the National Cash Network. ex-world champion Alan Jones was in the cockpit testing car and engine for the first time. Well, it sounds like a pretty great baritone, doesn't it? Don't you think it's a couple of... Unlike Jones, Patrick Tombay has driven for Ferrari and has learned to judge a turbo by its sound. Sounds good. But beneath the momentary excitement, there were problems. Funding from Beatrice was to be discontinued, leaving Ford as the committed sponsor for the whole show. as much as you could. But this feels a lot better. You know, more support. Engine run cleanly? Yeah, yeah, very clean. Clean as a whistle. The philosopher Wittgenstein defined a game as simply consisting of it. <coughs> Formula One is defined absolutely by its own set of regulations. Regulations that seem as complex and volatile as the technology itself. The excessive power generated by today's turbocharged engines has made a mockery of these rules. The smooth power that Jones has experienced is due to a totally uncompetitive turbo setting of 2.5 bar about half race boost, but at least everything else is stable. Ironically, it's to this setting that all turbo engines will be restricted in 1988, an interim measure before the outright banning of turbos for the 89 season. 87 on the uh, temperature. Um, but no, nothing, not enough. Nothing. Use turn five that time. Yeah. Ah, oh, thanks, Charlie. Engine clean all the way up. Yeah, no, clean, no. no problems. Very clean on the down run and no hesitating or popping or doesn't seem to be any of that nonsense going on. And the initial thought that, I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you'll, you'll start to improve it now. Yeah, <laughs> now it's Tombe's turn. Three laps, I think. No mm -hmm. stop. That's what he said, and then lunch. For the moment, his main concern is the rather uncomfortable crutch strap on the ill-fitting harness. Oh! No! Uh, you think you need to get the, the crouch uh, strap uh, from so far back? <laughs> for racing men, Cosworth took an early decision to develop the engine slowly, even at the expense of top-end power. This meant that they would never appear to be in the same league as Honda or Ford. The heat and fumes at the Dino Ferrari circuit in Italy. Despite internecine conflicts, the teams struggled to qualify for the San Marino Grand Prix. But their sense of gloom was heightened by recent news of the tough new restrictions on turbo engines. This change in the rules put Ford on the spot. The sponsorless team was in disarray, and the engine was underdeveloped even for the present regulations. For the race, the computer must run the engine as economically as possible conserving every drop of its 195 litres of fuel. To qualify, a turn of the screwdriver reprograms the engine into a fire-breathing gas guzzler. Actually, the atmosphere should be a bit quicker. 
I think you're going to be all right in the race. Oh, 